Okay, here we are, last week, doing therapies for psychological disorders, part two. And what we're going to cover here is cognitive therapies. We'll touch on the rational emotional therapist by, and Beck's cognitive therapy. And we'll look at cognitive behavior therapy as well. And then we're going to look at biomedical therapy. So this is where we're looking at drug therapy. But we'll also touch on electroconvulsive therapy and psychotherapy as well. And then we'll lastly look at the, 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 the therapies and therapists as well. All right, so um, we are almost done. This is the last video. You've been doing really well. I do appreciate your time and effort on all this. And so let's carry on and get this one done. And then we are done. All right, let's go. All right, I'm starting the cognitive behavior approach. Assume... It assumes that maladaptive behavior can result from irrational thoughts, beliefs, and ideas. It's often called the cognitive behavior approach. You combine cognitive insight with methodological, methodical behavior approach. The therapist seeks to change the way the client thinks. You determine effectiveness by assessing change in the client's behavior. Effective for, uh, treatment for anxiety disorder, hypochondria, uh, psychological drug dependence and psychological uh, pathological gambling. The cognitive behavior approach, when it comes to a, ra a rational emotive therapy, this is a direct a directive form of psychotherapy designed to challenge the client's irrational beliefs about themselves or others. This was designed by Ellis, and it's the ABC theory: uh, activating event, the person's belief about the event, and the emotional consequence is the A. B and C. Ellis claimed it's not the event itself that causes the emotional consequence. Rather, it's the person's belief about the event. A doesn't cause C. B causes C. If the belief is irrational, then the emotional consequence can be extreme distress. Ellis believed that clients don't benefit from warm, supportive therapeutic approaches that don't address the irrational thoughts that underlie the problem. As irrational beliefs are replaced, emotional reactions become appropriate and less distressing, eventually leading to constructive behaviors. Clients are taught that they cannot control demands of others, but they can control their emotional reactions. Relaxation techniques are often taught to control emotional reactions. And if you look at the slide above, you'll see the example of it going from the activating event, where it doesn't go from A to C, there's an A, B, and C. Now, alternatively, alternatively, Beck, he introduced his cognitive therapy, which helps parents stop negative thoughts as they occur and replaces them with more objective or positive thoughts. Automatic thoughts cause misery of depression and anxiety, like, to be happy, I must be liked by everyone. If people disagree with me, it means they don't like me. Depressed people hold a negative view of present, past, and future. For example, it's never worked and I can't make it happen. Or they notice only negative, unpleasant things like, um, or fail to recognize the positive events and feelings. They jump to the wrong conclusion, like no one likes me. Therapists identify and challenge irrational thoughts. They set, uh, set up a plan and guides the client so life experiences become evidence to refute false belief. So they're essentially, they're given homework assignments to track all of their automatic thoughts and feelings that are, that are evoked by them. Clients then write, substitute rational thoughts. So every irrational thought you record in the course of the day, your homework is to find the rational alternative to those irrational thoughts. Now this can be brief, lasting 10 to 20 sessions, and that may sound like a lot, but it can be in many cases described as brief. Extensive research demonstrates a high rate of success when you're working with people with mild to moderate depression, panic disorders, generalized anxiety disorders, um, cocaine addiction, insomnia, bulimia, negative and positive symptoms for schizophrenia, um, they're less likely to relapse than those who are treated with antidepressant drugs. Now we're going to jump into the biomedical therapies, uh, drug therapy, if you will. Therapies based on the assumption that psychological disorders are symptoms of underlying physical problems, including 
drug therapy, this includes drug therapy, electroconvulsive therapy, and psychosurgery. Millions of people take medications for psychological dis, um, problems. Now, drug therapy can include antipsychotic, antipsychotic drugs, drugs used to control severe psychotic symptoms, delusions, hallucinations, disorganized speech and behavior. They inhibit dopamine activity. They're also known as neuroleptics. Thorazine, stelazine, uh, com um, compazine, and melaril are examples of neuroleptics. 50% of patients have good responses. Long-term use can lead to uh, a condition called tardive dyskinesia. It's, it's almost con um, continual twitching and jerking of face and tongue and squirming um, movements of the hand and trunk. It will resemble um, a Tourette's syndrome. Biomedical therapies continued. We can look, um, this acts as mood elevators, uh, drug therapy for antidepressants in a sense, acts as mood elevators for severely depressed people. They're also prescribed to treat some anxiety disorders. 65 to 75 percent of patients report significant improvement. 40 to 50 report complete recovery. Placebo studies demonstrate almost equal effectiveness. Responses to antidepressants, a combination of physiological effect on the brain and the patient's confidence in the effectiveness of treatment. Now, tricyclics, the first generation of antidepressants, block reuptake of nor norepinephrine and serotonin into axion terminals, enhances the action of these neurotransmitters in the synapse. The side effects can include sedation, fatigue, dizziness, nervousness, dry mouth, forgetfulness, weight gain. Weight gain is the number one reason 20 or more pounds that people stop taking them despite the benefit. The second generation antidepressant, um, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, um, these block the reuptake of serotonin, increasing availability at the brain synapse. Fewer side effects and safer in the case of overdose. Effective in treating obsessive compulsive disorder, social phobia, panic disorder, generalized anxiety disorder, and binge eating. There are side effects to these medications, sexual dysfunction, return to normal when drug is discontinued, mind you, and an increased suicide risk is not substantiated but has been noted. Monoamine X oxidase inhibitor, MAOI, um, block the action of an enzyme that breaks down uh, nor norepinephrine and serotonin in the synapse, increases the, abil the, uh, the availability of norepinephrine and serotonin. Usually described to patients who do not respond to other antidepressants, similar side effects to tricyclic and, um, antidepressants plus patients must avoid certain foods to reduce the, the risk of stroke. Now what you're seeing certainly in a lot of these drugs is that there are benefits but there are certainly side effects for a certain proportion of the population. Lithium and anticonvulsant drugs, uh, naturally occurring salts used to treat bipolar disorder. Effectiveness in treating depression and, bipo uh, and bipolar is unmatched. 40 to 60 percent of patients experience a reoccurrence. Monitoring blood levels necessary to prevent nervous system damage. Anticonvulsant drugs are effective in treating bipolar with fewer side effects. Now, benzodiazepine, Valium, um, Librium, and Xanax are, are prescribed more often than any other class. They're effective in treating panic disorder and anxiety. Um, Xanax works fast and has few side effects. Uh, relapse is likely if discontinued. Uh, withdrawal symptoms include intense anxiety, the disadvantage of drug therapy is the difficulty in establishing proper dosage, helping or help with symptoms but not the cure for psychological disorders. Maintenance doses are required to prevent relapse. So if we look at, just kind of quickly, this slide here, drug used to treat psychological disorders, you see a list of the drugs on the left, some brand names in the middle, and the symptoms that they treat on the right. Now, as an alternative form, and not everyone has, is as familiar that this is still occurring, is electroconvulsive therapy. An electric current is passed through the right hemisphere of the brain, usually reserved for severely depressed patients who are suicidal and don't respond to other treatments. It's highly effective for major depression. Uh, unilateral 
ECT used today instead of the bilateral ECT. Uh, effective, u equally effective with milder cognitive side effects. Patients are given an anesthesia, controlled oxygenation, and a muscle relaxant. When effective, electric, electroconvulsive therapy changes the biochemical uh, balance in the brain, reduces cerebral blood flow in the prefrontal cortex, triggers the delta waves, there's no structural brain damage demonstrated in an MRI or CT scans. This is not something that's used for everybody. And then the last form we'll look at is one that um, it's not used as much as you may think, and it has a long history, interestingly. It's um, psychosurgery, brain surgery performed to alleviate serious psychological disorders or unbearable chronic pain, severe depression, anxiety, or obsessions. Now, the lobotomy is the first surgery um, that was used. You're seeing an example in the sort of image there where um, the surgery was av involved severing neural connections between the frontal lobe and the deeper brain centers involved in emotions. Initially, a tremendous contribution. However, treatment left patients in a severely deteriorated condition. What you're seeing there is a probe would be put up under through the eye into the brain and a bit of a sweeping action would happen. It took quite a while to get to a place where they had some better control over what they were doing. And so it was no wonder that it left people um, severely deteriorated. More modern versions of psychosurgery result in less intellectual impairment. Sur surgeons deliver electric electrical currents through electrodes to destroy smaller localized area of brain tissue. It's helpful with obsessive compulsive disorder, results still not predictable and consequences are irreversible. Treatment is considered experimental and an absolute last resort. Now lastly, whatever therapy you take, you need to know whether or not it's one for you. So evaluating therapies. Very ther various therapeutic approaches share, share many similarities. Several help the client reflect on their own thoughts and emotions. Most therapists use a set of core techniques regardless of perspective. Specific elements distinguish therapeutic approaches from one another. So overall, psychotherapy is better than receiving no treatment. No one type of treatment is more effective than another. Behavioral therapy shows slight overall advantage. Cognitive and inter interpersonal therapies show advantages for depression. From the patient's view of effectiveness, they believe, um, believe they benefit substantially from psychotherapy. Equally satisfied with psychologists, psychiatrists, or social worker, the longer a patient was in therapy, the more he or she improved, about six months or more. Patients taking Prozac or Xanax believed it helped them. Psychotherapy seemed to work as well as psycho as psychotherapy seemed to work as well as psychotherapy plus drugs. And so in terms of evaluating therapy, it tends to be its success is based on how a patient feels it was for them. And since there isn't any one therapy that can work wonders on any one condition or any one person, uh, it really demonstrates how little we know about psychological disorders, about the brain, and about what will work for any one person. So I hope you've enjoyed this class of Psychology 2. We are now at the end. All we have left to do is a test. So thank you very much for your contributions, your, um, your involvement in the journals, uh, your videos, and I hope you've enjoyed this particular semester. If you're interested in more psychology, I'll be teaching abnormal psychology online in the fall. So good luck. Enjoy your summer if you have the summer off. And we'll see everybody in the fall. Bye now.